Well, hello there, folks. Welcome back to Travels with Jordy. I've got to start this episode off with an apology. You probably guess it. The apology is about the really crummy audio I've been giving you, and uh, that's a real problem because there's going to be more. I shot about two months of video with the new GoPro 5 before I realized that it has a pretty well-known problem with a muffled, muffled audio. So I can fix it a little bit in post, and I'm doing the best I can to fix that up, but there'll be some gaps where there's footage I just can't use, and I'll do some voiceover, and some of it will be just not all that great. Anyway, if you can stick with me, that'd be great, and we'll, uh, we'll try to get this audio thing sorted out. Cheers. <laughs> So here I am back to work and first things first, I've got to deal with this uh, delignification, this um, electrolysis corrosion in the wood of the, not exactly the deadwood or the keel, it's basically the extension of the deadwood aft of where the cutout for the propeller is. So where I'm applying this epoxy right now, that piece of timber, the center one anyway, is only about six inches deep and then uh, I'm into ocean. So I don't want to lose too much of this wood, thus me being concerned about restoring it. So what I'm doing now, after having uh, dried it out for almost a week with a heat gun on it, so it is dry even though we're float, um, is soaking in as much CPES, clear penetrating epoxy sealer, as I can possibly get into it. So I'm sort of just brushing it on and pretty soon I think I end up just pouring it on. Um, because it took a lot more than I imagined, which was great. I mixed up two batches of, oh, I don't know, several ounces each. And uh, it all soaked in. There I am just pouring it in. In fact, I make up another batch shortly. So I was actually quite pleased with the way this worked out. Lots of epoxy soaked into there. It's not a permanent repair, but it's a pretty good temporary repair. Let's get the tanks in. Okay, listen, when you're going to do a lot of ambitious ripping, you want to lubricate your table a bit. I don't know if this is the best product ever, but I like it. It's a dry lube, Jigaloo. Um, I just basically blast it on all over. Give it a bit of a wipe. And uh, I find it's not so crucial on the man that it's slippery. It's like silicone. I find it's not too crucial on the fence, but it's really nice to have it on the table. This uh, little table saw originally had a kind of slippery, plasticky coating, but it doesn't last all that long. Okay, let's do some more ripping. Okay, so what I do when I'm going to rip a dado, I want to put a uh, three-quarter inch slot in here to go on the slide over the bulkhead. Um, so I'm going to rip it with table saw, making successive cuts wider and wider. So what I do is I start a cut somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle because you're going to be keep flipping it over and um, making it wider and wider by cutting once in this direction and then turning around and cutting it once in this direction. And as you move the fence over, every time you make the cut, you make the notch a little bit wider until you get to three quarters of an inch. So you keep trying. When you get close, you try it. And then uh, you move the blade over just a bit and it makes it easy. Okay, let's get started. Let's see what I mean. Okay, so my uh, initial cut was very close to the center because when I flipped it around it only slightly widened the slot. So now all I do is move the fence over roughly a little less than a blade and uh, keep cutting and flipping until I have it three quarters of an inch wide. Getting wider and wider. Of course, I'm doing two pieces at the same time, one for the other side of the door. I gotta say, this table is lovely and slippery. Okay, that's enough for you for now. Okay, <laughs> made a bit of sawdust here. Uh, quick bit. Anyway, okay, so uh, I've plowed out the um, dado in there and let's see how well it fits. Let's sit that into that channel. Excellent, very nice. Now it doesn't fit in at the top yet, of course, because I still have to trim it out around how this detail is going to work. I'll figure that out. And it's not going to fit at the bottom yet because I have to trim it out over the um, little step here. But on the whole, it's going to be great. Now, before I do that even, I have to cut um, a dado out for the actual door to sit in. Because the door comes in here roughly half an inch. And um, 
I'll leave roughly half an inch of door stop here. So it's a cut in there and a cut in there. Truth is I could do all this with a router table, but in some ways it's just cleaner and easier to do it with the table saw. Jumping ahead a bit here, I've already cut out the data for the uh, door clearance. Um, the audio was completely unusable on that clip and uh, you've seen me rip enough stuff. So here I am trimming the bottom of the um, door frame where it'll sit over the notch in the in the sill and that just means uh, setting the uh, circular saw over uh, that same 15 degrees uh, holding a square against the wood as a fence and taking successive um, slices until I've got it to the point where I'm deep enough. Pretty self-explanatory and uh, not worth too much explanation. I'll uh, continue cleaning this up. Let's see how this fits. So we're here and that slides down. Oh, just about perfect. Very nice. Okay, so I'll clean that up a bit in the bottom and uh, now I start to figure out what we can build at the top. Yeah. So I'm quite ashamed to say that I'm refinishing the door uh, only a year after I made it because I oiled it with one coat of oil thinking ah, I'll get to that later and as with so much of the oiling um, I never got to it later and it the finish completely failed so but it's still in good shape it's um Cipelli mahogany and uh, marine mahogany uh, Luan or a Marinti uh, marine grade plywood um, and it stains up quite nicely. Uh, sorry, it doesn't stain. It oils up quite nicely and it'll varnish quite nicely. Um, the color looks quite different now, but as soon as the oil gets on there, it matches up very nicely. It's also super heavy. It's just shy of two inches thick. And uh, it, uh, it, it really turned out to be a great door. That's why I felt quite bad about um, kind of letting it go. But I got to get in good shape because the door frame is almost ready and we're going to put it on tomorrow. It's pouring rain today. Can't do anything outside, but tomorrow we're going to get the door on. Yeah. First coat of finish for me is always tongue oil. Um, I know anyone who's been watching this channel for a while knows I've had some, di not disasters, but I basically, through my own negligence, have let some tongue oil get away from me. Um, so yes, now I always varnish over tongue oil, but I still start with tongue oil because I really like the depth of the finish that you get from it. And I really like that it's such an incredibly, it, it, it really, really soaks into the wood gives it a really nice luster just just love it and I don't think any varnish that I've ever used has been able to do what tone oil can do plus here I can slap some on um, with all this dust in here right now and it really doesn't bother it at all because I'm gonna wipe it all off and uh, I'll be wiping off any sawdust with that good morning putting the rest of the door together another dry day I just want to mention that um, I'm just making the frames and here's an existing frame and I know it's traditional to have very heavily eased edges on um, on wood on a boat, but I actually like a slightly more crisp edge. I basically only just break it. I don't know about a sixteenth or less of a radius. So here we have our two frame pieces. Uh, the sill piece is already in place. So let's see uh, if we can get it to line up and start to fit the door. Well, the next few clips had completely unusable audio for a number of reasons. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you quick. I set the two frames in, uh, but before I wanted to really finish them completely, I wanted to set the door and make sure that everything sat nice and square before I put too much investment into those side frames. Uh, and that requires gaining out hinges for the door and uh, screwing it into the bulkhead, which I'm up to here. Okay into the frame and into the door goodness doesn't that look nice so here I am chiseling out the recess for the door hinges I call that gaining uh, for the hinges I don't know where I started using that expression or how universal it is but anyway gaining for the hinges is the way I've always called it you know it's funny the reason I couldn't use the original audio in this clip well other than it was pretty nasty recorded but mostly I couldn't use it because a plane flew over Victoria Harbor is an airport and there's constant airplanes and while trying to do the voiceover you're listening to right now it took me three takes because planes kept flying over I, I tell you it you don't notice it until you try to record stuff anyway chip chip chisel chisel hinges are on and it's done very pleased there's a bit of spring to it the door is a bit warped from having sat 
in a crooked frame before, uh, but I think in time we'll be able to take that out of it. In fact, nice thing about it is actually the latch will spring it in a bit and it'll hold quite nicely. Okay, good enough. Let's get that back off. Um, att permanently attach the rest of the frame, deal with the top. We got lots left to do.